I look at Jimmy and Jimmy inspires me. I'm like, all right, maybe I'll con, <laughs> I'll con Praga into giving me like a, you know, a test drive. Kimmy's retiring at the end of the season. I'm just saying. So. We don't know what he's going to do. He's going to be on Instagram like juggling chainsaws. We've had a few big incidents as well. I'm going to ask your opinions on the controversial ones so that uh, I can get you cancelled. They're fine. And I saw an Instagram story of him <laughs> hitting boxing pads. And Lance, if you see this, bro, it's no shade, but your boxing form is awful. Welcome back to the Cooldown Podcast with me, Tomo. Minton's here as well. To everyone who's watching on YouTube on the new Cooldown Podcast channel, you can see him. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any other podcast platform, I'm afraid you can't see Minton. No problem. Today's guest is a pretty special one. First one of 2022. A man of many talents, songwriter, rapper, YouTuber, podcast host, the silkiest voice on the platform, I swear to God. One half of TMG alongside Cody Co. You've read the title, you know full well, it's Noel Miller. But Tomo, why is he on the cooldown? Well, the man is one of us. Noel is a proper petrol head or gear head, I guess. And he loves a bit of F1, participated in loads of the virtual GP stuff at the start of lockdown and has jumped into karting this year. Think a Californian super GT. So sit back and relax, I hope you enjoy this podcast. We actually recorded this just before the Qatar Grand Prix qualifying last year. So again, that'll make sense as we go through. Take it away. Podcast 22, Noel Miller. No, man, I'm good. I uh, just man. had McDonald's, so, you know, I'm nice and fueled up, ready to talk talk game. Just had a karting session this week with uh, James Pohl, driver, mm -hmm. uh, most recently for Audi. He's actually here from London, and I knew he was coming. I was, I was pretty stoked. Mm -hmm. I'm like, let's go karting, man, and uh, we made it happen. So it was good. I learned some things, and so I'm feeling pretty beat up from that today. Karting but, uh, is, a, is yeah. a physical physical experience i saw you put out a video today um i haven't had the chance to watch it i apologize it's definitely got that like that drive to survive effect you know we, we um kept a little drama in there but i think you know it it helps because i think carding footage on its own it you can't really gauge like what the feeling is uh mm. when you're doing it this might destroy the man's ego but i'm gonna ask have you ever heard of super gt of course yeah everyone you know yeah there yeah, you go. yeah well because yeah. I, I feel like the car that you're racing mm -hmm. it looks in terms of the chassis looks pretty much pretty identical i mean I, i've i've driven the kind of um rotax carts here uh, mm. at daytona and the, the top out about 80 90 mile an hour i mean yeah it's a physical experience man yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, no. Um, I I followed Super GT recently. Um, mm. on Twitter, but no, I, I've known of all of you guys for a while. Um, yeah, I know he's he's doing some racing for Quadrant. Um, I think I, it should be the same engine. I can't remember if his had the um, uh, like the intercooler on it. Um, I don't know if it's like a X thirty motor or like a KZ motor. Um, or Oh, I think I, it changed I, quite recently, but I can't remember to, to what, to be honest. Yeah, but, but it's 100 yeah. cc's. That's uh, Mine is. It, it, yeah, it might be pretty close. Uh, yeah, mine's a Tony Kart. Um, mm. But yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm definitely curious about uh, uh, like a Rotax, like Shifter. Um, I, I see those every now and again. Um, I'm not ready for all that. Shifter carts are crazy, but working, <laughs> working up to it crazy expensive man as well like, have you been karting for long is this just a recent thing you've jumped into yeah so i started let's see um i started beginning of 2020 ish um mm. i would say end of 2019 um you know uh driver his name's jagger jones he's actually as of now he's He's on, he's got to drive for um, NF two thousand team, so I think he's trying to work his way to IndyCar. Um, he kind of spotted me out from all the racing stuff I'd done during the quarantine, and he was like, uh, "You want to try carts?" And I was like, "Yeah." So he broke me in on an X thirty cart. Um, it was fast as shit, soft tires, like you know, uh, ra I think it was race ready, I believe, or close to it. Um, I could be wrong about that, but from there I was pretty hooked. So top of twenty twenty. Um, I actually was talking to a guy named Troy Adams. He owns the track that I work at now. Uh, and he was basically like, yeah, man, I um, I could tell, like, you take this seriously. Um, mm. I appreciate kind of like your view on it. And Troy took me in. And um, Troy is a, 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 a great coach just because, um, 
you know, he <laughs> definitely calls it like it is. And he's definitely gotten me up to speed as far as driving goes because uh, he's focused a lot on my mental game. Um, mm -hmm. He's like, you can't even worry about data or any of that shit, man. Like, are you scared? <laughs> You know, you need to, like, are you, you scared? To, yeah, are you like, scared? yeah. I, mean, I definitely get scared in the car, and you know, he'll, he'll like, um, one of my, I know this is a long answer, but um, that's what we're here we, for. Yeah, we can get back to this. We we'll get back to that in a second. But he's basically been, uh, you know, coaching me for the past, you know, year at this point. Um, so the plan yeah. is through 2021, I will be. I'm planning to do at least between five to seven cart races mm -hmm. um uh, events and then uh maybe um some miata stuff so just nice yeah just uh just slowly mate, definitely man that's like entry level like cheap as fuck and yeah you can just batter the car and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because it's a miata yeah yeah who cares <laughs> no nah, i mean yeah no one gives a fuck <laughs> No, I mean they're they're uh, that's what they're there for though. So you know, mm. um, if if all this you know if all things go as planned, I um, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, just because I'm definitely hooked. I, I love it, um, mm. and obviously I'm just doing everything I can on YouTube to try to fuel my you know pseudo racing career. Uh, <laughs> I guess so. The junkie paying for his habit with YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I look, I look at Jimmy <laughs> and Jimmy inspires me. I'm like, all right, maybe I'll. <laughs> I'll con Praga into giving me like a, you know, a test drive, you know, in, in the R1, maybe, you know, three laps. Jimmy's, Jimmy's done amazing things, man. Like, why yeah. not? Why not? Because, because is this, is this a thing that have you always, have you always loved racing and were you able to, to race at all when you were kind of much younger? No. So, um, my, you know, my childhood was interesting. Um, my parents were, uh, we could say strict. Uh, they're they're okay. they're very particular. So what's funny was like with video games. Um, my parents were not like the type of parents that, uh, like, once I got a console, they would buy me like one or two games, and like that was it. And okay, they you know because I wasn't good in school, so they just viewed me as like I should have all already. I was bad in school, so I shouldn't have many games. <laughs> And I definitely should not have games that are violent. So, um, no Grand Turismo. <laughs> no, that's literally all I could do. It was like on like Nintendo sixty four. I had like Cruising USA, and then like PlayStation mm. three. All I had was Grand Turismo for like three months, you know. And then I slowly started like saving lunch money, and then like pinching games off at like GameStop and stuff, and like you know flushing out the library. But yeah, it was mm. it was always like racing oriented stuff. So. Um, didn't race like for real as a kid. Um, there are definitely like a few like local things with like go karts, and whenever I do that, mm. oh man, I was I was in there. Um, mm. uh, but yeah, uh, so that's always just kind of been in my brain. And then I got a sim, like a cheap sim, back in like 2014. Uh, it was just like a Logitech and uh, just a chair, a rando chair, and on a fucking TV dinner table, like. Mm. <laughs> And then, oh mate you know have you seen jimmy's video when he's like roasting people's uh budget setups like it's so good you should watch it it's no so i've uh the ingenuity that some people have is just a joke weirdly i've stayed away from that video because i'm like um <laughs> i'm like almost afraid i'm gonna find my setup in there and I, you know just my you know my fragile ego i'm like i can't have jimmy you know, talking shit about something that's in my place. Without the way things have pl like panned out in the last two years, I I've really just been able to mm. dive into, I guess, my motorsport interest, and um, I'm a thousand percent like hooked, like in a bad way. Um, <laughs> I've like cut myself off, like if I like when the GT season is running and you know it's like yeah, playing yeah. on YouTube at like three in the morning, I'm I'm fucking liable to just. You know, watch like IMSA replays and then, oh, fucking GT's on, I'll put that shit, you know, and, and mm. just start like just binge watching way too much racing stuff. So, you know, I gotta, I gotta relax sometimes. Well, what's, what's the, um, cause you're, um, you're California, right? LA. Mm -hmm, yeah. And the, what's the kind of scene in terms of like, so you're karting at the moment, are there a lot of tracks? Is there, is there much infrastructure there? 
or is it all quite spread out? Because obviously in, in the UK, like driving three hours is considered far. Whereas, you know, I mean, our entire country is the same size as your state. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's yeah. different, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a lot of tracks. I mean, I guess it, 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 you know, a major thing that I shouldn't miss here is like all through college, I, I had a tuner. Um, and okay. yeah, I had a, I had a fifth generation Honda Prelude and, Oh, nice. Yeah, and uh, nice. it was a total, like, it was a total, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a beater, but it was it was definitely in rough shape when I got it. Like, the exhaust was like a, like a cheap, like, welded, like, eBay muffler to, like, a rando mm. pipe. And um, so, you know, like, I put it all, I only had money for, like, a few upgrades. I, like, bought an exhaust um, of oxidized carbon fiber hood for $75. And then I dropped like seven seven hundred fifty bucks on like a used set of like race suspension, and I turned the dampening all the way up. And like for a summer, I felt really fast, and my car felt <laughs> really tight. And uh, so you know, uh, I'd run through canyons and stuff. I think culturally, that's the kind of the fun part about California is there are a lot of like canyons mm-hmm. that you can like run through, and um, car culture is definitely very alive um in that way you know you you, Mm. um like one day recently in the last few months um i just woke up and i was like i found a a a gt4 on turo do you guys have turo in uk uh i'm sure we've got an equivalent what is it like uh it's like a car rental marketplace yeah oh okay you can like you can like hurts or kind of yeah but it's it's more like it's almost like an airbnb for cars like uh people just list their cars and you can rent them for the day oh yeah that definitely does yeah that does exist yeah so yeah one of those and they had a gt4 on there for like like no money it was like 150 dollars 200 bucks or something and you get it for the day and i'm like i have to do this and so (laughs) It was crazy because when I drove that car around, I felt so special because every Porsche driver that drove past me, like they'd all like, you know, yeah. throw me deuces. And... <laughs> One of us. Yeah. Yeah, really. And the whole time I'm like, you have no idea. I'm I'm lying. I'm fake. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live a lie. Well, I was going to because in terms of like, so you're not just a motorsport guy, you're a car guy as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, that's what I've found strange. Like I know a lot of, I've got to know a lot of people through my F1 stuff who are f1 but aren't into cars which i to me it's oh right cars first and that's interesting which i find a bit odd yeah it's a bit weird like i feel like the two are so inherently mm-hmm. but but i don't know like as a car guy do you, are you like jdm are you like you know german what's the, what's your kind of what's your vibe <laughs> i mean naturally i i think i skewed jdm just because like that's what i grew up with i actually kept my civic from college and um i'm waiting for the day that i can drop like a k20 motor into it and do like a like a (laughs) fabbed engine bay um and i want to have like the ultimate like uh sleeper from like back in my day like Mm. you know dropping a k20 and like a lightweight honda was like crazy so i definitely say i'm like jdm but i'm so you know now like the thing with motorsport is you know to your point earlier about like infrastructure as far as like getting out to like tracks and stuff now Mm. i've realized how many tracks are like pretty close to where i live and the kind of like the accessibility of it all and like finding a way to race and drive just at these places it's just starting to like open up a lot of things for me like um in in just like the vast uh options you have with racing like Mm. um I was like doing a ton of reading about those, like, you know, uh, those like safari 911s, like where they, you know, take a 911 and lift it and, you know, take that out and do rally. And um, so now I'm like in this headspace where I'm like, I want to take my Honda from college and drop a motor in it. But I also would love to buy like a 1980s 911 and, you know, take that shit out to the desert. And, you know, so. Take it back or something. Yeah. So like California definitely has like a ton in the way of like places Mm. to race, like dirt, sand you know, whatever. And then nearby, like Arizona, Nevada, there's like great options for driving there and Texas, you know, so um, the world has definitely shrunk even more for me because now I just kind of process things like, okay, if I wanted to go do some carts at Coda, I could, you know, just take a quick flight and, you know, this and that. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, 
it's kind of crazy just how from the little bit I've bitten off how like it's just sort of like opened up my brain to all the ways to get into motorsport and just you mm-hmm. know all that in general but it's it's weird yeah that you would have anyone that's interested in F1 and doesn't like cars or like isn't big yeah. petrol head I, I don't get it because because in terms of like for me that the the two big you know in terms of not being able to yeah you know, we, we couldn't afford for me to go karting even though there were facilities around like brands hatch wasn't that far from yeah did you do a lot of karting as a kid or anything like that no like it, it, from what you said i'm pretty much the same like whenever there was an event like someone's birthday or something you could right kart yeah in. and i'd usually do all right but there was never like enough yeah there, there wasn't enough money I, I don't even know if if my mom would have would have let me to be honest yeah uh, she she wasn't that she wasn't super strict to be fair <laughs> but um, my, my 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 dad just wanted me to be a football player of course or a soccer player of course know. so um, unfortunately that dream never came yeah to me. but I, I found my way back or in in the end eventually yeah um but talking of um tracks in the u.s like have you been to you know laguna seca kota sebring like <laughs> yeah been to so uh Kota was the first track i've been to i think in america honestly that's like the first track like real track mm-hmm. i've been to uh which is a crazy experience thank you red bull uh, <laughs> there's a dude at red bull who just hit me up his name's ross and he was like hey man you want to come to Kota?" i was like yeah and he's like all right cool we got can you. you give me ross's details after this yeah show? serious yeah i'm still waiting for my pl- I've, I've upset too many uh teams and drivers <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll let him know talk too much shit about him so. I'm like listen man tom was cool man just let him come through <laughs> i can't promise what his his videos will be after the race but <laughs> come on this video is sponsored by Haas, the greatest yeah. F1 team of yeah all time. um yeah go, sorry yeah. no no you're good so um let's say friday monday um and depending on when this comes out uh i might have even released a video about it but I'm going to go to my second track and the first track I've been to locally or local to me, which is uh, button willow. I'm sure you've heard of it either through iRacing or some other shit, but um, I'm going to test drive a legend car. I don't know if you've heard of these. They're pretty American. Um, okay. Yeah. What, what is it based off of? Uh, what I know is it's like a motorcycle engine and it's like a really small chassis. Um, let me okay. just search it. Legend car. Um, I don't know too much about it. I just know that they're typically meant for ovals, but you can race them technically. So the course, uh, Button Willow is decently technical. So that's yeah. going to be, um, you know, where I'll be taking it out. And I've, you know, based on everything my coaches told me, these things yeah. are like, you know, carts on steroids almost like <laughs> they, like the shifts are super fast and the back end can step out on you pretty easily and um you know they're just like a unique beast but yeah so that'll be my first and then outside of that um yeah I haven't been to any tracks i did go to a weird dirt or not dirt weird oval track in a town in canada called regina <laughs> Yeah, and that's how it's pronounced. Sorry, it's pronounced. No, 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 man. It's pronounced like vagina, bro. I'm, I'm going to Canada next year, so... Yeah? I might have to hit it up. Yeah? What are you going to do in Canada? <laughs> Getting married. Are you? Yeah. Wow, congrats, in the mountains, in, in, uh, in, in the mountains in Calgary. Well, Hell yeah. Lake Louise. yeah congrats, Calgary. bro. That's awesome. Thank you, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... Re- tour via Regina. Might catch the Canadian Grand Prix, maybe, because we're literally getting married on the... The Grand Prix on the Sunday and we get married on the Tuesday. So I'm trying to see if we can go via Montreal. F- finesse it, man. Finesse it. If you, I mean, if you can figure out a way to get to this track in Regina, it's pretty special. It's like a really <laughs> dodgy oval track. Um, but the racing there is like, you know, these are dudes that are like bring like stock cars and like, you know, go too yeah. wide um, and really get after it. It, it's, uh, it. it was a good time. So, yeah, I haven't been to too many tracks. Um I think next year I'm trying to figure out a way to do the Fun Cup at Spa. Uh, okay. Um, and I, that's through James Poole. He's kind of like uh-huh. told me about this, where if you get enough drivers, you can go all in, and like WRT will provide you the car and everything all in, and then you guys just race. Uh, it's a pretty steep entry, so 
you know, we're trying to figure out like five, six other people, you know, maybe yeah. I'll hit you up if we got a slot. <laughs> Spread the love. Yeah, make it, make a day of it. And it'd, it'd be cool, man. Fun Cup, I've, I've heard that's that's meant to be like, uh, in terms of like accessible, because that's always the question, isn't it? It's, it's around like accessibility. Yeah. And it's so difficult. There's so many stories of like, well, again, we had similar, like we, we could dabble in it, but not to any kind of extent. And I think that scratch was, was mainly scratched from, through Gran Turismo and the Fast and the Furious yeah, franchise. Of course, yeah. yeah that's what, oh. it's, it's the case for so many people as well. But I think there are, you know, fun cup and, and there's a lot like you get that citron c1 cup over here where or, or like me artists like you said i mean i would love because i i did a video with um uh veloce a little while ago and mm. it was kind of we were over this track and and it was it was single seat stuff but they had some like me they had some rx8s as well that we could just like kind of drive around and oh, it was so fun to yeah. just fucking like rag a rotary rx8 to like 9000 rpm yeah um, but for me like miatas are like the most i if i could pick a car to take racing and i'd rather just pick a cheap like pile of crap that i don't mind binning rather than yeah. some fancy lamborghini just yeah. get a miata take it racing man oh that's yeah what I, want to do. I mean that's i mean car carding is expensive which you know relative it, it's cheap and that's why i like carding mm -hmm. is because i feel like very comfortable being on the limit and really mm. pushing it because if i you know drop a tire if i bend something it's fine mm. like you know <laughs> i it, it's gonna cost me to fix it but you know yeah it's not like crashing something really special yeah um, that's why i'm keen on uh get, getting a Mi getting into a miata and and potentially mm. you know racing one uh, or buying one to race because yeah um i i, I definitely think that uh that ability to just not care and focus on like the craft is is the best part mm. of racing you know because once you start caring about the money it's not fun anymore mate i couldn't agree like that's that's the thing i, I feel like there's something <laughs> have you ever taken your uh have you ever taken your partner out on like a passenger lap or anything because i feel like motorsport is something that or, or just cars and just speed is something something that you can stick anyone in a passenger lap We've seen all the, the the F1 passenger laps that they do. Yeah. Um, and like, I think anyone, it doesn't matter who you are, everyone's going to feel something. Yeah. And I think that's something quite unique to racing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's, it's one of the most, I think, it's one of the few things where you and another person can experience it the same way. You know, like, mm -hmm. like movies and music and a lot of stuff in culture, like when you consume it, you're going to have your own opinions about it. But I feel like speed it's like universally yeah. understood like you either hate it or you love it you know and when you yeah. love it like that feeling is just like it's like wow like you know, do yeah. more like let's let's go again and um yeah. actually when uh i went to coda part of that was red bull went out to um they got some spots over at um a place just outside of austin that it's like a rally school and i feel bad i'm forgetting the name but they had like a, I believe it was like a WRC ready car or like at least WRC like level driver. Um, and he, he, he took us around in like a quick like rally lap around um, the facility. Mm -hmm. And um, I've never been in a rally car and I was like, you know, I'm like loving it. I'm like, this is crazy. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't. And my fiance, she, Alina, she, um, you know, she always like she'll watch me cart and uh yeah. her thing is always like ah oh, like i don't want you to get hurt or you know she can't enjoy it the same way i do because the whole time she's just mm. worried like is he gonna be okay or what have you mm. um and yeah it, it was like i went in the car and i i came out and i'm like smiling ear to ear i'm like this is fucking amazing I'm, like <laughs> you have to go and she's kind of like Ugh, like i don't know and so she gets in and she hops out the car and like, man, I've never like seen her smile that big over a car. She like, <laughs> she like crawls out the, the cage and she's like, holy shit, that was so crazy. Oh my God. So yeah, I mean, I just say all that to say like 100%, like speed, it just has that effect on people. It, it's, um, mm. there's, I, there's not many things like it. You know, it's probably like speed and like no. cocaine. Like that's probably. <laughs> Two of the same. 
I guess it, it tricks tricks all the same things in your brain, yeah, right? Like yeah. In terms of all the, all the same things are popping off. Up yeah, hundred percent. Um, and it's well, is it cheaper? Uh, I don't know. It depends on your supplier, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, well, in in terms of, um, I was going to say like, I'm glad you mentioned WRC because to be honest, like, I, I love Formula One, but for me, WRC is like, and, and I don't watch it as much as I should. But in terms of my I think like respect for the craft. I think the way rally drivers like go like the absolute clappers, the margins for error. Yeah. And I don't know, just the, the, the way they're off road, even like extending that to kind of like Jim Carner as well. Like honestly, like the level, I would love to do that. I'm like, mate, if, if I could get a passenger lap in any type of car, I'm not picking Formula One. I'm pink, picking like, WRC wow. in the Welsh Valleys or something, hundred percent. Wow! So, because I've I've not been exposed to rally that much, and that was like my first kind of like dive into it. Um, mm. Have you like never been like what's like what is the closest you've been to a rally car like ever? I've seen them at like car shows, um, right? stationary but i've never like no I've, I've never been to a rally i've only ever watched it on telly but I, I do feel like you know when i when i fell in love with with cars and racing it was probably rally first and foremost you look at the old like uh like colin mccray era the old like subaru um i actually did a video another one for like we went to the pro drive factory yeah which is the company that built the blue subarus and we saw like a few of them over, which was just like, it was mad. Like that, that to me is probably the most nostalgic motorsport thing. But I just have so much respect for the way that they can just go like the clappers. Like you've got, you've got, you've got to be wired differently to be a racing driver, but especially like a rally driver. That's something, that's, that's mad. Yeah. I, I think the interesting thing with dirt is you, um, you got to commit like whatever move you're going to make, like mm. you have to go for it. And, and, uh, yeah, I will say, weirdly, in that passenger lap, I I was surprised at how smooth it was. Um, mm. I, you know, just because you know, my perception of things is, like, I think a little bit skewed just because of karting and, and all my experience in cars has always been on the road. So mm. I'm thinking that this car is going to feel like every, you know, uh, you know, dip and whatever. And once the car gets like, um, like once the momentum is built up, I mean, the thing is like butter. I was, I was blown away. I felt like I was riding a ride at like Disneyland. It wasn't even <laughs> like riding in a car. It was, it was this really just kind of gentle, like floating. And I, I mean, I think if you're picking, yeah, I, I would agree that it's probably arguably a more fun experience. Cause I think with formula one, mm -hmm. you just be worried about your neck getting, you know, ripped off and true <laughs> and true. throwing up. <laughs> I'm sure it's a buttery experience until you hit a tree, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it becomes <laughs> a different kind of buttery experience. But um, oh, 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 and also before we move on from from this part as well, I've got to ask. Obviously, you're carting now. Yeah. How 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 good are you? Like, what, what level? What level are we operating at here? Man, I. It's tough to say. You know, I've only. Um, I've mainly just focused a lot on building my foundation this year and I've, I've only, I've, I've really only com completed one full race. That's what this video I just posted is about. It was, that was like my first mm -hmm. full race. Um, that first race was, uh, or the very first race I did, it was like, I only did one heat, so I don't really count it cause I didn't mm -hmm. do the full day, but that day, uh, I was great. I was like at the top of the midfield and then I, it was like, I, it was only out of 10 carts and, and I started fifth and then, um, I was fighting real hard for third. Um, and, uh, my pace was only like, I think maybe like one second off the leader. Um, and then, you know, I think, um, if I'm thinking about, kind of how I drive now relative to my last race, I would say I'm probably like midfield, you know, um, mm -hmm. like bottom to middle of midfield. Um, and I feel like I don't know enough to be like a, like a top 10 driver at all. Um, but I think, yeah, uh, about, about midfield, you know, depending on who's on the grid. <laughs> practice makes perfect. Well, mate, you're, you're only just starting out. So yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, you got to give yourself. I mean, again, you look at what you know Jimmy's been able to achieve in yeah. such a relatively short space of time. Yeah, and obviously talking of content, because obviously, like I said at the start of the podcast, you know, motorsport isn't the content you're known for. But no. going forward, like, do you feel obviously you put the car, you've you've just put your first car and video out today, and, and like going forward, do you see that being a a bigger part of what you put out there into the world because obviously it's something you clearly clearly love doing so if you can make content out of that then happy days right yeah yeah no 100 percent uh oh i, I want to make so much i mean um what what's actually um kind of wild is like i've been experimenting for a minute so there's like a really old vlog that i know a lot of people I haven't seen and uh uh it's me like going to one of the tracks out here and then i did another video where i did talk about that race where i did my first heat um mm. so this is my third run at it but like this is the one that i'm really really like you know kind of like making known and like talking about um but from this point forward yeah i mean m the test drive that i do on monday i'm gonna make something for that and then i plan to document like every race i do uh, in 2021 and then um i'm trying to work out just more and more driving content so um mm my second channel it was my kind of like twitch replay channel it's called noel miller live mm -hmm. but i've renamed it to noel miller presents and i'm probably gonna put a lot of that there um and really what i'd love to do is work up to a point where i can i can figure out a way to host like you know a lot of uh car or you know motorsport content creators and i'd love to do like a big you know event where everybody's driving and uh you know and you know who knows man Maybe we get some big YouTuber to think that he's better than us or, you know, he could, he could, you know, you know, he, or, or, or some, you know, not to name names, but, you know, rhymes with Shake Paul, you know, like we get a guy like that who thinks, oh man, this shit is child's play. Jimmy Broadbent, pit maneuver on Jake Paul <laughs> is the content that I think I'm everyone is desperate for motorsport uh, dorks would be loving that dude no nah, not even <laughs> i think it'd be great you get you know you get like a cocky guy in there and um yeah yeah you just totally play him you get like a you know you get like a top like female driver and you know you 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 just make him think like you you just shatter all stereotypes bring out juju noda she's like 15 yeah just rings around him. yeah yeah <laughs> you know Fucking pound, pound i'm here for that man pound it man just you know it's something that i've noticed as well over the course of my kind of relatively short kind of f1 motorsport formula one journey is that the audience globally is like grown massively yeah for, for particularly for f1 yeah but obviously i want to ask i want to ask you because you know the states is a market that hasn't really typically like yeah, F1 hasn't been a centerpiece in, in your motorsport because you've got so much to choose from, I guess. But I mean, I've noticed like, I, I almost have as many Americans as British who watch my stuff. Yeah. Um, and like, how have you, you know, since Liberty Media took over in 2017, they've, you know, made big moves in, in social and grand that the platform in the States, we've now got a second race um, in Miami next year, which is going to be really decent maybe a third one they want a third one i know they want a third one i've heard from very reliable sources they want one in vegas as well so what, what do you make of it like have you noticed a, a an uptake of people you know and friends of friends like watching f1 now yeah you're definitely hearing a lot about it you know i think the thing for you know people like us you know that 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 really love it there's gonna be like a there's going to be this period, you know, of a year, two years where I think people need to catch up um, because a lot of the opinions and views they have. And, you know, I, I was guilty of this, too, when I first got into Formula One. Was, you know, it's, it's a lot of that, like, drive to survive effect. You know, they, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a lot of their talking points are what they saw in the documentary. And, you know, they're not really like they're maybe they don't fully comprehend like what the driver's doing in the car like you know e even the physicality of it and um but you know th that's that that all come with time I don't, I don't even look at that as like a course, negative yeah. thing but um yeah it's uh it's definitely getting popular and um it, it's cool because i think motorsport for so for a lot of reasons is still niche you know you still kind of have to 
explain why you like it. Formula One is special in that it's been able to transcend that, you know, that aspect of, of, uh, you know, sort of trying to convince someone why it's cool, you know, like it just is. Mm. And it helps that the cars are cool looking and loud and whatever. But, um, I think what will be interesting is, is as it grows, what, you know, what, what does that mean for people's overall interest in motorsport? And do we start seeing other forms of motorsport? Like, you know, uh, getting a bit more shine and, and does motorsport in general start to become, uh, I don't know, like, does it get like a, a different kind of life, uh, from this process, you know? Um, so yeah, like I'm, uh, I'm glad that it, that's getting popular. Um, three races though. I don't, I don't know if we have that many good tracks for formula one in America. I could be wrong, but I don't know if we need three. <laughs> well, I mean, Cota was built from scratch in what? 20, was it 2013, 2011? Yeah. I don't remember now. Miami's obviously still a work in progress now and then what is your opinion on the Miami track um look I mean we we haven't there, there's not much elevation change yeah. which is a shame because I think that's one of the things that makes Kota like really special actually I, I love that run up to the first corner oh man um <laughs> and you look at a track like Spa I mean if you can do that fun race at, at Spa then yeah O Rouge Radion's gonna be a madness yeah <laughs> That that's my biggest kind of um, that's my biggest kind of concern around Miami. Obviously, I think there's so many amazing tracks in the states. I think it is a shame that they're fe- feeling the need to build these from scratch. Yeah, and I I don't know I, I've never been to to Miami, um, but uh, my understanding is the Hard Rock Stadium is not exactly in the center of Miami. I think it's a bit out of, not out in the middle of nowhere, right? I've only been to Miami once, and I was only there for like like. 16 hours so i don't even know myself um i think i think it's in the middle of nowhere so so in terms of the whole because i understand with like formula e they'll take it to new york and yeah and city people were more likely to because you know like silverstone's in in the in the arse end of nowhere you're only going to go there if you're into into f1 you're not just gonna oh oh formula one no i'm, I'm reserving judgment i'm not going to be too harsh on it. i think i think the layout has definitely got potential i'm a bit concerned about the lack of elevation but all in all I think it'll be, it'll be nice. There's enough. I think there's enough. Like you got to treat the US. I feel more like a continent because it's so big. There's so many people. There's so much diversity. Yeah. Like Miami, like East Coast, West Coast, New York. Like it's all, it's all very different. It so is. I feel like you know. I, I, I think two races is merited for sure. Yeah, I mean, I have mixed feelings about street circuits. I'm hesitant to say they don't promote great racing. I don't know. They, it just whenever I watch street circuits, it just feels like. Just a little too narrow. It just, Typically, yeah. It, it, I feel you. I mean, Baku is saved by the long straight. Let's be real. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And and But in that way, it's special because you need to nail the other stuff right so you can get that good run down the straight. And, you know, yeah. um, in that way, it makes it fun. But, yeah, like, even then, yeah, if, if, that, if it wasn't for that, you could argue. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's one of the, like, I feel like these current regulations that we're just kind of coming out of, because when they changed it up in 2017, they were just like, we just want to make the cars four or five seconds faster. Yeah. Which, like, as as a person watching it on telly, when a, a car's doing a 130 or a 135 lap time, you don't really see a difference. Nah. You know what I mean? It was like, and then that just spoiled the overtaking because of all the dirt. Yeah. So hopefully... I mean, how are you feeling about next year? Obviously, new regulations. Have you uh, have you read much into it? Like, yeah. In terms of what's changing. I I what I you know the um, uh, well two things I want to say really quickly. I feel like the Miami circuit, more than anything, I think it's just one big ad for Formula One. I think the results oh, of that. 100%. Yeah, like like. Of course. Of, yeah, I'm not saying anything like revolutionary, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I I guess I want people to know why I'm bringing that up and why I'm asking you. But mm. yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm curious to know if you feel this way, but I almost feel like the results of that race are like borderline irrelevant. Like I feel like it's almost like a F1 move to just like show like a large group of people what the cars look like, how they sound, what the vibe yeah. is. And like from there, maybe they start working backwards where they just, or they start growing it. It's not really backwards where they say, okay, mm. okay, Americans, like you've seen how loud and cool they are. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we want to see them, you know, do this and that. It's like, all right, great. And then, then they start flirting with like maybe better tracks or newer tracks or whatever. Yeah. But, 
Um, rule change wise, I'm I'm skeptical of next season because of how the money is sort of playing out. Like I know some teams are kind of like they've put money down. Like Haas, definitely. Like aren't they completely like? Didn't they gamble a lot of their budget planning for the 2022 car? I mean, they didn't do anything to their car this year. Right. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. What <laughs> Literally I mean? nothing. Yeah. So here's the thing. I think it's so easy to do a lot of this like F1 math and like clearly as Brazil will show you F1 math does not fucking apply. Like, you know, all this shit, all the Reddit comments going into that weekend was like, Oh man, best Lewis is going to get P 14. That's the highest he's going, <laughs> dude. You know, the, I saw people saying like the alphas are the fastest in the straights and I don't see him getting around Kimmy or whatever. And, what? I mean, maybe the, maybe these were cracked out comments. I'm, but I'm not. I'm not lying. It's a deluded Alpha Romeo stands. Per, yeah, probably. They exist you know. out there somewhere. I'm also like reading comments at like very late hours, so I was probably catching all the people with wishful thinking. <laughs> I probably wasn't getting like good analysis. You know, you know, I'm hitting these threads way too early. <laughs> yeah, mate. No, you, there's mate. There's some sus F1 opinions out there, twenty four seven, man. Yeah. But I guess I guess I say I like to say like <laughs> I feel it's like I am excited because I'm just hoping the theories pan out and I do hope that mm. you know we do get like out of this out of this whole thing like yeah like solve that fucking dirty air and let's like see more wheel to wheel and it wasn't like Gunther saying like oh he's worried that F1 is just gonna turn into like a spec type league versus like you know. uh you know, uh, uh, like a sport and like being about the engineering and stuff. But I, I read that and I'm like, I kind of almost welcome that. Like, I would love it if the cars could yeah. be a bit more even, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that's such a like age old debate as well. It's it's the kind of, you know, it, it, in most other sports, you can compare, you know, athletes directly, mm -hmm. right? Because you're under the same, you know, everyone's playing by the same rules. But I, where F1's kind of perceived as such an individual sport, even though it is, it is way more of a team sport, yeah. you know, you need those per both kind of elements to come together in perfect harmony, don't you? Yeah. Um, is, yeah I think there's, there's enough spec series out there. I think most racing series are spec series. And I think there always has to be, for me, that engineering component. But with the budget caps, they're, they're as restricted as they've ever been. I mean, I think, what was it, in 20... 2019 i think mercedes ferrari and red bull were all spending over like 400 million and the cap now is like 145 so it is significant like the drop yeah mercedes give us some of that you don't need it you don't need all of it clearly you can get the i think we'll... they, they, <laughs> exactly. they can get the job done with less just give us some of that you don't need it we need it come on toto uh, Toto is a big fan of the pod, by the way. Is so he? I'm sure he's watching. <laughs> nah, I'm <joking. laughs> listen, man, as a, as a guest, listen, Toto, come on. Every listener here needs their own go-kart. It's not fair that you keep all the money for yourself, man. It's not. Look, you want motorsport to be accessible. Make it accessible. Spread the Yeah, off. sponsor me and Tomo with a million <laughs> each, all right? Please. We will. Sp oh, that's not enough, man. It's just, not enough. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, what am I saying? You need two million for one F two season. Yeah. two million. I was thinking we just take it's a million junk. and you know we can we can just get rental get cards. Ours. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maximize the income. Wait, but yeah, no, I mean that that that's a great point. That you know, uh, I mean, the money is 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 as strict and yeah, it's just like what the f I mean, like I'm I'm newer to the sport and. You know, I was like kind of like keeping tabs like when Vettel was uh, a champion and then had just switched to Ferrari um, mm. and then only really kept tabs in the way of like Lewis and watching how he just became more and more a staple in pop culture. And I was like, damn, yeah. I didn't know an F1 driver could be this fucking popular. That is nuts. Yeah. So he's properly transcended. Oh, dude. Like way beyond he's the like I, I roast him on our podcast but like make no mistake i'm 100 percent jealous that guy probably one of the top 100 coolest people in the last like 50 years easy <laughs> easy not even close man yeah nicole Scherzinger in his first year in formula <laughs> one what a 
What's a lad? <laughs> Bro, I mean, my thing is like, you know, he, I mean, he, obviously he's a decent looking dude, but I mean, just like to be so successful and, mm. you know, it, it, and, and it's funny cause like he has these other like peripheral talents, like when he makes music and stuff, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it isn't that bad, like not in the way you would expect, not so. you know, a guy mm. like in his role, like for it, mm. any other race car driver, they're like, I'm going to make music on the side. Everyone's like, listen, man, relax. Have you heard of Jacques Vill Villeneuve's uh, musical Get endeavors? Get the fuck out. Let's see this. No. Have you not? No. Oh, right. Go on. Get it up, man. Take your time. Trust me. Jacques Villeneuve. You know, Indy, one Indy 500. Yeah. One time F1 world champion. Arguably the most overrated. <laughs> uh, underrated. Mm. <laughs> nah, he, he wasn't great. He, he's, his peak and dip off. But listen, man. I see. I, he's got a shit ton of music. Wow. It's, it's yeah, all really it's, good, uh, I'm assuming. Uh, I'm joking. Uh, I'm going to listen to a song. Hold on. I'm going to... Gonna go full Anthony Fantano here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening now. You. Oh my god. I don't need to hear it, mate. I don't need to hear it. <laughs> I'm just gonna skip to the. <laughs> oh, that face says a lot. That face says Damn. a lot. Damn. There, a hey, there needs to be a, like a like a like a. You know how, like, when women deliver a baby, they have that postpartum depression? There needs to be, like, a post-racing career, like, rehab. Like, these guys mm -hmm. have been experiencing adrenaline, you know, mm -hmm. every week at very high levels. We need to prevent stuff like this from happening. Like, <laughs> he would not have made this music if there was a program, you know, like, when he was, like, when he woke up that day, he was like, I'm going to make music. It's like, listen, <laughs> this is you needing the adrenaline. <laughs> We're going to go for a Look, run. Kimmy's retiring at the end of the season, I'm just saying. So. We don't know what he's going to do. He's going to be on Instagram, like, juggling chainsaws, and then... <laughs> Mate, I could see that. I could so see you know, that. He's probably really good at it, but, you know, we just we need, to, we need to take care of these guys as they leave this sport, because it's not fair. We jack them up with heroin every no. weekend, and then, then they just have to Can't figure it out once them. they're done. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't let him go back out there's actually a, i think there's a few other drivers who have dabbled in music actually um oh that the guy who um do you remember during lockdown because i know you were involved in the esports stuff yeah. over lockdown and there was bit. the guy who oh what's his uh daniel Ab abs daniel abs who uh he got someone to take he got a pro sim racer to pretend to be him yes for one of the races yes and then got kicked out of his team. He does music as well. No, he does not. He does. He does. He does. It's like a bit of it's a bit of a house. It's a it's all right actually. It's not terrible. It's better than Jack. Okay. Not as good as Lewis. It's kind of in the middle. Oh yeah, he um Canny Valley. I, how much trouble did he get in for having the sim racer pretend to be him? He lost his seat. Oh, it went that far. <laughs> I, wa I, I wanted yeah. to say that, but I did not want to sound like I was full of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. He, he, he lost his seat at his, the team that I believe, because it was, I think it was, at, yeah, the team that is his name, like, Abt. That's, that was his, like, granddad's business. Oh, or something my goodness. Like oh, my goodness, yeah. bro. Yeah, he's That's fully, bad. oh, man, he's fully an influencer now. He had to pivot. I think he still races. I think he's in uh, Formula... I think he dabbled in Formula E. I'm not sure what he's doing now, to be honest. Yeah, I'm looking uh, at his Instagram. Look, it's, it doesn't look like a lot of Grand Prix days, if I'm being honest. Well, it almost bloody um, Pagano when Pagano took out Lando. Yeah, that, that was... Uh, that was... That, what did you make of all that? Chef's kiss drama. <laughs> I loved it. I loved watching a grown man beef with a child. It was, it was awesome. It was literally... <laughs> it was like... <laughs> <laughs> we were all so bored that it was just like oh I, I remember at the time i was um i was editing for wtf1 yeah and we had to, we wanted to get a video out on it so i was literally like as soon as it happened we were like right straight on that within like three hours of well about five hours of the incident happening we had a video out and it banged views so that's how bored everyone was that they had to get into you know all kinds of essays and discussions about <laughs> you know a, a digital race 
Mate, we've got, we got sidetracked there. I, I can't even remember what we were talking no, about. No, it's I mean, fine. We were talking about Formula One. We were. So, yeah. racing's racing, man. Yeah. Do you remember, like, the first time you watched F1 at all? Like, do you, did you have, like, an earliest F1 memory? Yeah, I I would... Um, I'd watch races here and there uh, during 2014, 2013. Um, but even then, right. they were, like... Um, I'm trying to think maybe because maybe because I was not I wasn't watching Formula One like actively. So from what I knew, yeah, just yeah. as a stranger, there weren't a lot of resources in in the way of like getting access to the content, at least that I knew mm -hmm. about. So I would watch these like really dodgy like re uploads and like it would be like <laughs> 20 minutes of the race or something. So like I wouldn't I yeah, didn't yeah. get like a good experience. My first like real solid experience watching formula one was like you know the fake season we had during you know mm -hmm. like during the pandemic you know the height mm -hmm. of it um mm -hmm. so that was like my first like chance to like watch it in full um so this is like my second season like actually watching it like in full um yeah uh, and even at that i missed some crucial moments because um, i was like on the road doing some shows and i completely missed mm -hmm. uh, uh russia and mm -hmm. I'm so bummed I didn't see that in real time. I was like, God damn, fuck. Mate, so good. That was intense. Yeah. That was that was a mad dish. Have you had much um interaction as well, like with, with any of the drivers through um uh, like virtual GP stuff and I mean no, not not much outside of that. Um, you know, uh I I'll, Lando would, he and I would like, you know, stream golf with friends every now and then. And uh, yeah, I yeah. I'd go harass his chat here and there, but, um, <laughs> uh, I haven't streamed much lately. So no, I mean, mm. uh, I haven't talked or interacted with too many drivers. I also remember what we were talking about earlier with next season. If we're thinking it's going to be good, we can come back to that later if we want, but, um, mm. yeah, we, we'll come back. We'll, we'll talk about this year. Yeah, I yeah. think now, I think now's a good time to talk about this year. Yeah. Um, but do you talk to many of the drivers often or you kind of, uh, no, I mean, I, I did like, I did a quadrant video with Lando, um, where we like designed a quadrant F1 car. Yeah. Um, a brief chat. Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. Um, I played a bit of Rocket League with Alex Albon as well, who's uh, like my favorite driver, which was... If I if I cross paths with Alex, I'm going to profusely apologize for like, like the terrible puns I made about him leaving <laughs> Red Bull. Um, you know, Mate, last year was difficult, man. It was oh, a difficult year for me. Why do people hate him so much? People on Reddit are unnecessarily mean. Unnecessarily mean. I know. Mean. It's like... It's just like you see you see weakness and like Reddit jumps on it, Twitter jumps on it, and it's like, come on, projection, really man. Necessary projection. Yeah, <laughs> literally. I, I fucking I hate like how many people get on a high horse about, oh, he cracked under pressure. It's like fucking you would too, man. Like anyone would crack under pressure in this fucking sport, let alone in that fucking seat. Get out of here, man. Look, look, he, he, I, I think people like he won rookie of the year in 2019. He was in that Red Bull alongside Max Verstappen in his rookie year yeah. and scored 74% of Max's like points. He was like top, he should have got P, we know he should have got P2 at Brazil. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. Lewis, yeah. <laughs> Lewis took him out. Lewis took him out in Austria. Yeah, just look, I, I mean, maybe, maybe I give him more benefit of the doubt than I should because i'm not because nah, i love him all right but at the end of the day yeah it, it was always a baptism of fire we've seen it with sergio we saw it with gasly before him like sergio still qualifying like half a second off him which for a man with 10 years in the sport that that tells me all i need to know but i like that seat is borderline cursed it is so fucking tough to be in that seat and i, I like it yeah yeah i i'm kind of loving that I love watching Sergio do well, but I love that there are these yeah. moments where everyone can point and be like, it's not fucking easy. So like, I'm kind of an Alex fan as well. So I'm like, leave that fool alone. All right. That shit is not easy, man. Max is at that level, but also that's the thing with, um, that's the thing that like, I feel like if you've got a certain, I think Max has got a certain way he likes the car set up. And yeah, you know, it's just, you know, very pointy nose, same as Fernando um does as well and it's like you know it's a lot to ask for a driver to jump in it was a lot to ask of pierre mm -hmm. um you know 
Dan- Daniel Red Bull didn't want Daniel to leave, but Daniel just didn't feel the love. You know? Yeah, he, he left for a reason. I would be at the end of the day, but I would love to see like, and I'm probably not the first person to say this, obviously, but I would love to see Carlos in that car. Just because science is Mr. Adaptable. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, obviously like he's he's jumped around a lot. And I would just love to like see what a guy like him would do in that car for even half a season. Like what or, or mm. you probably need a full season, but Well, I mean it, it almost happened. He was a re- he was a tour Rosso driver, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. when he first jumped he, he was alongside Max and he uh he actually came pretty I think Max beat him, but Carlos out qualified him in their first year mm-hmm. at Tour Rosso. So he did show signs, but I think because Max got that, I think the reason Carlos left the program because Max got the seat alongside, we well, replaced Kvyat, didn't he? Mm. And then Ricardo was there. And then science, obviously Ricardo and Max were driving at a really good level. So I think Carlos didn't see a route to that team. So that's why he, yeah, of course. he, he pissed off to Renault. Yeah. <laughs> He's a great driver, though. But, yeah, anyway, let's talk about this year. Yeah. F- first of all, which drivers are your favorites? Let's start with that. Do you have a, any particular drivers that you really, like, pull for? This year or going into 22? Let's, let's talk this year. So, this year. okay, so for this year, honestly, um, I'm really, like, obviously it's towards the end, but I've been loving, honestly, been pulling for Checo. I've been loving just watching him, you know, get out there and... and just tangle in as best as he can with, with the front. And um, I used to not be a big fan of his, but I don't know. I I, I, I came around on it. I don't know why. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, I, I have to show Lando love. I, I uh, always love to see him do well. Um, who else, man? Um, weirdly, I'm I'm really sad for uh, Italian Jesus, man. Um Giovinazzi. Yeah, like he's a. Uh, is he like a superstar out there? Nah, but I feel like he's such a staple in my mind, and it 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 makes me sad to see him go. <laughs> he seems like the nicest bloke. Which yeah, is, a lot of racing drivers are dickheads, so yeah. it's, it's quite refreshing. Yeah, to be fair. yeah. I'm just trying to think of anyone else who I'm, you know, I might be happy for. I I'll like you know, I I like when it comes to Max and Lewis, I don't even give either of them a piece of a piece of like me because like they're in the front all right they they have all the yeah, fans yeah, they yeah. need they don't need another fan i agree <laughs> i agree I, I that's why i i, I don't pull for I'm, I'm attracted to struggle yeah too. same same yeah that's it <laughs> i'd love to see some what well, so what about the uh you know your fellow kind of north americans obviously you pull for checo but about you know nutella man lance stroll um, not lance stroll Nicholas Satifi and Lance Stroll. Yeah. It's so weird to me because, like, marketing obviously has such an effect on everything. Um, mm. So it's sometimes, like, I look at Latifi and I'm like, I'm like, damn, I forget this dude is, like, a driver for Williams, which I feel horrible saying. You know, I feel fucking, you know. <laughs> He's got, like, a cult following online now, I swear. Yeah, no, he definitely <laughs> does. Um, it's out of nowhere. But I like I don't know what it is like with Williams. I always feel like they only have one car on grid at all times. Like I always feel like mm. one of those cars is not working. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> would I like to see Latifi do well? Of course. Um, I'm definitely curious to see how him and Alex get on next year. Um, Same. Lance, uh, you got you know you have to admit that the kid like he can do the job. Uh, mm do I have a hard time supporting him because I'm massively jealous? I don't have a dad that could pay my way into the league. Of course, <laughs> of course, of course. You're just honest, man. Like, come on. And, and I saw refreshingly honest. No, oh, thanks bro. Honest. And I saw an Instagram story of him <laughs> hitting boxing pads and Lance, if you see this, bro, it's no shade, but your boxing form is awful. Um, I'm not a pro, but that jab is hideous. And I'm not going to show you any love because you have the job that I want. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. As a massively jealous person, bro, your jab is terrible. And I wish I had your life. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, uh, like, between them, I can't say I'm pulling super hard for both of them, if I'm being straight up. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. No, I, I pull for Daniel, Lando. I like Pierre. I like Esteban oh, as well. I was gassed when you he do. won. You do. 
You know, I've never. I like I like Esteban. I've not met many fans. That's what I mean. Maybe that's why. But he's just such a. You know what? For me, like Esteban had such his story coming through. He he came from such humble beginnings. Mm-hmm. Like his dad sold. Like his dad was a mechanic. His like his, his family lived above the mechanics. Yeah. When Esteban started karting, they sold it, and then they literally bought a motorhome and just drove around France for like two years karting like they both jacked in their jobs and then he got picked up by Renault and it was like I just I did a video about him where I did just loads of, and I came out I was just like man I've got like so much respect for drivers who are able to make it without all of that back in same for Lewis as well yeah uh, but Est- I think Esteban's story is just incredible yeah you know what um now that you say that it it makes me you know just because you said that it makes me appreciate his like borderline killer mentality when he's driving yeah. you know and i'm and i'm so invested on him and gasly like resolving their beef whatever the fuck that beef <laughs> is like it's a weird one yeah like and, you know I, i'm always like i always want to hear his side of the story because pierre's always like i have no idea mm-hmm. i have i have no qualms i don't know why he wants to kill me or why he hates me so much <laughs> but yeah you know what like uh that i feel like would explain why maybe he uh i feel like when he's on camera he's he's, he's kind of almost like max where he's just very like you know yeah it was a good day or a bad day and he, he's a, it doesn't give too much of him maybe that's wrong maybe i haven't seen enough of him but yeah i like that you pull for him nice dude that's uh he seems like a good guy like that like, to me i mean i get some people saying to me like why do you support albon like he's not good i'm like what so am i meant to just support the best no like yeah i, I support the drivers who i who are who i vibe with with the most and it's funny as well because esteban and lance are like super close like they're they're besties and you know they couldn't come from more opposite backgrounds yeah. and i love that yeah that's a beautiful thing yeah and you know what? There's something to be said. It's crazy that, yeah, like the superstars always get the attention, but, you know, out of all the guys on the grid, it's like the ones that are probably more relatable are guys like Esteban and, and uh, you know, and, and even in some degrees, Lance, because they're the guys that are, like, working at it, you know? Like, um, and, and Latifi, you know, like, driving that car, that Williams car is, like, not easy, you know? And... Mm uh you you would think that people would identify a little bit more with that because um you know it's not to say it doesn't come to them naturally but maybe they're not like a max or a lewis where they just wake up great you know they're guys that like they need to put in a few laps to like figure it out and they really have to you know uh really focus to to make those like you know uh precise moves and really nail their lap times and like mm. they're they're working at it. It's not to say the other guys aren't, but you know what I mean when it's like, mm. um, yeah, of course, man. It's not necessarily about being gifted, but uh, yeah, you know, maybe they're just needing to put that extra ten percent of them in it, whatever that mm. is, and and yeah, you 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 would think that people would hold those guys up a little bit more, um, mm. but yeah, because I I, th- I think there's there's so much more to the sport than just the the title fight at the top. Yeah, but obviously talking of the title fight. Max Lewis, three races to go at the time of recording. It is the Qatar. It's qualifying in how many hours? Probably like 10? No, no, a bit more than that. Like 12 hours maybe till qualifying. Um, you'll probably be in bed. At the I'll, I'll, I'll stay off my phone and then watch it first thing in the morning. Up. I mean, in terms of over the course of the year, um, we've had a few big incidents as well i'm gonna ask your opinions on the controversial ones so that uh, i can get you cancelled they're fine um (laughs) i mean what have you made of it first and foremost that overall look dude to my understanding and from what i've seen worse has happened and there have been not worse has happened but there have been just equally as many um savage moves on track which i'm not saying is right and it's a slippery slope in terms of like promoting a dangerous sport. But I would be lying if I didn't, if, if I said when I saw a crash, I was a hundred percent like, oh, we can't have that. <laughs> I would be lying. Okay. What crashes are we talking about? Let's, should we talk about Silverstone? First? Yeah. Let's, I mean, let's just start there, man. Look, let's start th- Silverstone. 
I was there on the day. Damn. It was, uh, I wasn't at that corner. I was around cops, but um, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was funny. The vibe there versus when I got home and saw Twitter, and then I was like, "Oh wow!" Like you don't really see what happens, but um, yeah, that was tasty, wasn't it? <laughs> you wish you were on the corner, though. I do. See, I do. Because then you can say you've been there for one of the that 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 crash will go down like yeah. this whole season will of course but yeah you know there's there's certain instances in the history of the sport that will be looked at in 20 30 40 50 100 if we're still on this planet by then uh years time and i think that'll be one of them you know bro yeah. i mean i know i'm gonna get i know f1 twitter is gonna cancel me for even suggesting that anyone would like the crash i, I know I'm, I'm gonna get massive hate for that and <laughs> just let me just put my little flag in the sand now <laughs> It's sarcasm, guys. Relax. That crash was actually scary, you know? And I definitely felt like, oof. Like, you know, you want to see, like, the rivalry and you want to see it intense. Yeah. But, yeah. Y yeah, you definitely don't want to see it go down like that. And I think, I'm not joking around, I'm being serious. I hate it because I hate that that and Monza and, you know, even, like, Brazil. Like, I hate that these things uh, are stains on you know, what the final outcome would be, you know? And I think this happens in all sports, you know? Like, there's, like, some moment that the people point to and go, well, if this, then that. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and even the tires in, in Baku and, you know, with, with Max, yeah. like, you look at those things, and I think the most unfortunate part is for as great of a season as it's been, you wish, you wish that extra 1% that, you know, those crashes didn't happen and the tires didn't shred that we could get this like a hundred percent pure definitive result mm. that no one can fucking i think that's the part everyone gets robbed of in those mm. moments where it's these little things that are they're not little but they're things that people can go oh well you know title means less because this happened and i think that's mm. the part that sucks which because I, I would love to see it be just cemented you know no yeah, yeah, yeah. like it wasn't dirty no bullshit happened they raced every race and they finished every one and this dude just won and then that's just it. So I, that would be lovely. Yeah. But never going to happen. That that and and the thing is as well like uh, when you when you look back, I mean the amount of research I do for videos and I look back at who's won how many world titles and you look at you actually look at the nuance of uh, look when Rosberg won the title in uh in, in 2016, you look at the amount of technical DNFs that Lewis had towards the end of the year and it's like well yeah yeah you know what i mean and it's it, i i think that, that will always that's the thing it, it, you're right i mean it, of course I, i'm not interested in the drivers crashing i'm not interested in the fucking online drama and no, 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 shit and no. like other drivers fan bases because I, I feel like the drivers as well if, if they could see like if lewis if max could see how their most toxic like rep uh, like people who rep them on yeah. Twitter and have them as their little profile picture, they would be embarrassed. Like, uh, yeah, the way a lot of fans conduct themselves, but that's true of all sports, isn't it? Yeah, Ultimately. it's tribal. But, but isn't that isn't that crazy? Like people take it upon themselves to like brigade and and say all this crazy stuff, and it's just like they didn't ask you to do that, and no one wants nope. you to do that. <laughs> no, you just like you like you <laughs> just fuck the vibe up. That's literally it. Mm. You just fuck the vibe up. And those people feel justified because they find nasty people like themselves that want to fuck the vibe yeah. up. And it's like, no, you guys are all the weirdos in the corner in this party. Like, we don't... No one likes that. You're weird. It's a very good way of putting it. You're just, you're just weird. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, that's that's such a good point that, like, you know, I think that is... Uh, obviously, this is, like... Um, these are things that are going to happen. But I think if there was a way that we could just get a pure season where, you know, because here, here's what I'd like to see. We know Lewis is going to leave soon. I mean, the guy's been dominating for forever. He's getting older. He mm. said he's not going to race. You know, he doesn't, he, he said, you know, who knows if he's telling the truth. If he's just fucking. He's only going to race as long as he can compete at the top for sure. Yeah. And which makes sense. You, you know, you can't be mad at that, but no. I would love to see just a, a a a clean, graceful exit of the man, you know, where it's like, man, this guy dominated for so long and 
whether it's Max or I don't, I don't care who it is, but someone to pull up and have just like a great clean season where it's like, yeah, they raced hard and this kid just put it together and he, he beat the master and, you know, like a clean passing of the torch. Cause I hate now, you know, that whole shit in Brazil, ugh, Max is never going to hear the end of it. Question is, no, was it a penalty? You gonna make me answer? Oh my god! I'm gonna make you answer, mate. Uh, is it a? Oh, I'm scared. This is the cool down, though. Man. We're supposed to keep it chill, bro. Um, was it a penalty? I'm gonna quote Jimmy on this one, and I'm gonna say yeah, because it's just the precedent of like, yo, if you do bullshit, there's a consequence. I I kind of view it as like a it's like a preventative thing. Even even if he tried to turn the wheel and even if the <laughs> tires were worn, whatever, it's just like yep. the point oh, is man. it's in the front of your mind that that penalty can occur and mm. you need to be conscious of that while you're playing the game. Look, if... if what do you think? If It's a penalty, man. Of okay. course it is. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. such a... Like, he literally... Like goes about four car widths off of the track. Yeah. To defend the position. Yeah. How is that in what on what planet is I'm sorry, I, I I don't understand. Like a lot of these incidents I've been like, Oh yeah, I'll get the other side. No. Christian Horner is talking a load of nonsense, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. It is. It just is. It is just is. And I, I think like <laughs> I think the it clearly has an effect, right? Like clearly it's not just us saying this, like Charles being like, Oh, like if, if that's what it is, then like I'll fucking adapt. I think even that mm. soundbite, like that quote, mm. I think that's enough to be like, man, you, you have to know that everyone else on grid is like, that's bullshit, man, that you mm. like were able to pull that off. You know, it's been interesting though, how everyone's kind of like the people that say it's not, or like that it's cool. And, you know, obviously, if I'm joking around, I'm going to say, yeah, that's just racing. Let them do it. But <laughs> if I'm being serious, nah, you can't you can't have that, man. That's too much, man. Like people say people talk about like hard racing. Well, to me, hard racing is where you can battle lap after lap, corner after corner. Exactly. Like, you can jostle for position. And that requires like if you're just going to push man onto the gravel every time yeah or push him off like what what like what we did yeah so you know I mean, it's, it's a great way of putting it. Get it that's a great way of putting it yeah it's true and isn't that like you know that's like that's the exciting part it's not running the dude yeah. off the track it's like no. you know oh shit he's in front oh shit he took it back you know and yeah and literally that that's the good part and like and we've seen that a few times this year we saw that like we saw that with fernando and mm -hmm. george mm -hmm. in austria they had a quality battle, like over about four or five laps, and they always gave each each other just a Silverstone 2019, Leclerc and Verstappen. That for me is the prime example. Like so good. And okay, maybe yet yeah, track limits weren't always abided to. It's one of them as well. It's a bit of common sense, isn't it? You can't like when when you're there's so many there's so much nuance there's so many factors involved there has to be a human decision made on mm -hmm. it it's not you can't have a black and white rule book but when the drivers are showing an attempt to at least respect the other's space then yeah. i think yeah you know i mean yeah and real quick i'll say two things one just because worse or like people have exhibited this behavior in the past i'm not saying that makes it right i don't know someone's gonna twist my words i'm not saying that makes it right okay <laughs> but i am saying like yes relax a little bit because come on man they're driving like 200 miles an hour and, uh, yeah exactly uh, you know they, they psychologically they may break some rules okay but two mm. you bringing up charles and max is actually great because i look at that and i kind of say shame on you max like two times because i'm like you have it in you like you know what it means to be respectful and you know what it means to i agree you know to to race hard in a way that is safe. And mm -hmm. if you're like the kid at the front and you might get this championship and this and that, like look out for yourself, man. Don't do it in a way where, you know, you're punting, you're, like you're not 14 driving carts anymore, bro. Like just win it the right way. You know, just do it the right way. Don't don't involve all yeah, this other I mean, drama. Well, I was gonna say, because in, in terms of over the course of the year, who's been, 
the driver that's kind of stood out? Like, if you had to give your driver of the year right now, just before the Qatar Grand Prix, like, do you have a particular... Because I think for me, to be honest, like, as much as I don't like... You know, for me, Silverstone was more Lewis at fault. For me, Monza was about 50-50. For this, it's a slam dunk max. But I don't begrudge Max for no. for doing what he could to keep Lewis behind. This is more on a... I, I've got a more of an issue with the, the stewards and how they're kind of... Um, conducting it but I think Max has probably been the most impressive the most consistent in terms of performance driver for me this year but what about you what are you thinking yeah I think well I say I say that because I feel like Max and obviously people are going to say oh no it's like the rule changes and this and that but I feel like Max showed us that Lewis does blink sometimes and like Mm -hmm. definitely you know and I and I feel like he um he's human. yeah he's shown us that max is hu- or that lewis is human which is crazy right um and i think undeniably um for a dude in his position he is handling this like run at the title really fucking well it's like you Definitely. regardless of his antics and all that like you you can't deny like the kid has definitely put it together and stayed composed and mm-hmm. Even, you know, even uh, after Mexico, and they're like, oh, do you feel like you got it? And he's like, no, like, um, it, we just got to take it race by race. Like, mm. it didn't feel like that was something he was just saying. Like, I feel like he's really mm. exemplifying that. And, I agree. you know, as much as the move in Brazil was, like, dumb as shit and, like, asinine and, like, why would you do that? Um, not that you're trying to make positives out of, like, a really bad thing, but I just feel like it shows that, maybe how seriously he takes it and how much of himself he's like throwing at it that he's like even willing to go to the worst degree to like really cement that extra point and like really get after it um i think you kind of have to give him driver of the year in 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 a way yeah because because let's bear in mind as well like verstappen is doing things that you know we applaud senna you know, back back in Senna's day, he used to to drive in a in a very similar way. Exactly, he's in a position where you decide he's putting the onus on the other driver to decide whether there's going to be a, a crash or not. Yeah. and it's and it was it was applauded. And I and, and as well, I, I don't think you know. I think Senna, I think Schumacher were both guilty of of actually purposefully driving into people. Yeah, I think Max. I I don't think Max has ever gone that far. I do think he's driven very aggressively in a bit too aggressively at times but at the same time i don't think he's ever gone to to that extreme no yeah and i i agree i think um i think not that i'm you know I, I, i'm being light touch because i just don't want to be making excuses for stupid ass you know moves but he he doesn't you know given everything else he's done in the year he's not shown malicious intent you know no, i don't think so um uh and I and I think um, if anyone were to challenge Lewis, um, like out of everyone on the grid, I almost feel like you kind of have to be that way. Like you kind of have to be in that zone that really that Max is in, where he's like, "I'm I'm I'm coming," and you're either going to play my game or you're gonna fucking move because um, this is this is just how I drive, and which is you know. You could argue, well, if everyone drove like that, then, you know, then the whole shit's dangerous and whatever. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's undeniable. I think you, you kind of have to give it to him. However he ends up for how, mm. what he's done with that car and how consistent he's been able to be, you know, I, it's impressive. You know? and, and maybe yeah. someone can invalidate that, but I, I think it's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, you, you take away the, uh, the Baku guaranteed win, and the uh, Bottas bowling ball strike that, uh, <laughs> took him and Sergio yeah, out at that... Hungary. And you've got to say that I, th- I feel like Max has probably, you know, Lewis's uh, quite high profile mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Ma- Max has probably, yeah, I would say if I'd say a driver who's deserved the title, I would say would say Max up until this stage. But um, we'll see, man. I'm, I'm chuckling. I, like how did that com- <laughs> that whole moment completely escape me you know i just that was it was beautiful i mean 
Ocon won the race, which I was just absolutely gassed about. <laughs> but as well, like the, the beautiful, there was so much talk about but Agent Bottas coming in and doing the dirty work. And it literally happened. It literally, it literally happened. And you know what I hate? Is he's such a well meaning guy. He's he is, like the hey. worst person for that to like come from. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. And to hear him on radio afterward, like, you could just tell he was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, like, how, like me? I did this? I would, I would love to know what Toto Wolf's internal dialogue <laughs> was in like the 10 seconds after that incident. I would absolutely love to know. I'll tell you what, he fucking, he texted Alpha right there. He was like, hey, he's yours. <laughs> he's out of here it's just did the perfect job perfect reason to uh justify it. getting getting sling of him but it's, also it's um, so fucked because did the perfect job for Louis. <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah i mean come on i mean granted those things you know they those were things like working against max right mm. um you almost wish those things happened because then maybe it would have, it would have asserted some kind of dominance where people go, fuck. Yeah, yeah, it's true, and, and and also like that's that's the beauty of sport as well, isn't it? It's like you don't want it to be too predictable, and yeah, these things, these things will happen. Um, also, like in terms of you know the rest of the field, in terms of the mid to lower field as well, have there been any particular drivers that have kind of stood out to you over the? the course of the year man you know what this is, might be like some lame cop out shit but like for being old i'm lo i love what alonzo's doing out there i love that he's just you know I, you, I respect that you expect you expect guys at his age to be like you know what i'm gonna let him pass <laughs> you know i got kids i'm gonna calm down that's not mate for that though it does not i know but you know what, but you know what i mean like <laughs> For him, I know, I know. For him to come in and like still be that guy, that's mm. crazy. So I, I, I love that, and that he, uh, like he seems to just have as much fire as he did when he was like in his twenties. With so hundred percent, man. Um, hundred percent. I fucking love that. You know, um, who else midfield am am I really uh excited with? Well, it's not really, it's not really midfield. I mean, I guess he is, but. Honestly, Carlos, man, I, I love what what mm. he's what he's done and and how uh, yeah he he's becoming a star of his own. I feel like quietly, like mm. I feel like all the drama has definitely, definitely like you know overshadowed some of the things that he's done. But I mean, that dude for for a guy that's needed to switch teams like so frequently, you know, mm. for some getting the seat is one thing, but to be like passed around, I mean, that for most people, I'd argue like that psychologically would fuck with you, like. And maybe I'm speaking because of my own like life experiences and maybe I'm projecting a bit of myself in there. But, you know, I could see how for someone, if you're constantly getting passed around, that feeling of like, what, like, am I ever going to fucking land somewhere and like actually mm. stay here? You know, like the, I think it's easy as a person for your trust to be eroded a little bit and for him to kind of just be so content, like in that chaos and to just show up and do the job and, and just consistently like, nope, I'm 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 gonna put it all in there and, and uh get the most out of this thing that I can. Um so yeah, I mean I'm I'm impressed by him and, and obviously I mean this is not even like some ass kissing shit, but like the first half of this season, I mean Lando was on fucking fire and I feel like he showed us like what he has the potential to be and yeah. it really it really sets the stage. Like this young class like Carlos, Charles, him, Russell I mean, fuck, dude. These next few years are going to be really cool. I feel definitely. So. Nah, it's, a, it's a great. I think it's been a. It's been the perfect time to to get people into the sport with like Drive to Survive, and mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's so much easier to follow the sport um, globally now with the YouTube channel and all that. But also, you know, again, new new regulations next year. Young driver lineup. Like it's going to be. Who's your kind of? Who's your tip for twenty twenty two? If you've got a particular driver and or team that you think is going to do bits next year. I don't know too much in the way of like who spent what. 
Um, my... Yeah, that's all pretty. It's all pretty much just like a, it's a guess game, really. To be honest, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I wasn't sure if I'm like out of the loop on that because my yeah, understanding cards are very like... close to their chests. Very yeah. close. I mean, okay. I don't want to like make sweeping statements, but I think I'll go with this. I'll say I don't think Aston Martin is going to be much different. I'm hoping Williams will do something different. I'm really hoping that they will. Uh, Cause I, I, you know, I'm, I'm like you. I really want to see Alex in there. I, I, hmm. I think he's a great dude, and I'd love to. So I, I'm pulling for him, right? That my stinker, who I'm saying is like a dud. I'm gonna say is Aston. Um, I'm pulling for Alex, but the team I think that's gonna like, aside from Mercedes and Red Bull, they just they don't count. They don't count to me. <laughs> um, it's time for change. It's time for change. Yeah, yeah. Um, as much as I'd love to say. McLaren, I'm I'm really torn honestly between Alpine and Mc, and uh, Ferrari, which mm. that's just me, that's just me like trying to start drama and get a bunch of people to tell me I'm wrong and I don't know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> because cars are close to people's chests, maybe Alpine is just sitting on some like French government money that is just gonna like skyrocket them in you know towards the front and everyone goes oh fuck and i mostly say that yeah and then ferrari just because like i feel like charles and carlos they're just very consistent dudes and if there was like a team that could be ripe to challenge for possibly more than third you know who knows unlikely but um i think those guys just they just do good work out there and um uh you know they're probably going to take third this year, but I feel like um, I'm I'm going to put them as like you know the two to watch for next year. I think Ferrari. <clears throat> my voice is gone. I think Ferrari. Um, for me, I, I've I've said I think yeah, you know they got the they've got the money, which they've all, they've had the money for a long time, but they haven't won a drivers or constructors title in like 13 years or something mad. And like you say, the, their driver lineups arguably the strongest in terms of mm -hmm. two drivers operating at the ceiling of their car yeah. in a team. Yeah. I'd probably say they they've been the best this year. Um and you know what? There's like there there there's there's some wounds that have been licking for time now and it's about time Ferrari got back to the top, I think, mate. Psst, we'll see if we're massively wrong. Probably. I've already done a video on it and I've already told everyone to you know what you can do on Twitter where it's like remind me of this in a year. Yeah, and loads of people are gonna if they have a bad year next year, whatever day it was, the eighth of November, twenty two is gonna be a bad day for me. Um, Listen, <laughs> if they can secretly get a, that second that that second you know battery system in there, you know, mm. again maybe they'll try it again and maybe they'll do it in a smarter way. Maybe maybe <laughs> they'll play with the rules again. Hopefully. Uh, it depends if you like drama or not, I suppose. Um, right, <laughs> Noel, we'll wrap this up, mate. Um, yeah, of course. One man. final question um, sure. that I'll stick on at the end. Yeah. Um, because I love a livery, that's, uh, I do a lot of livery design on my channel. Mm. That's kind of a big component of what I like doing. So I always like to ask, of this grid, and, and of this grid, and also of all time, what's your favorite F1 car livery? Um, this year and ever this year and ever so i'm honestly torn between alpine because i just i love the simplicity of thing. it i just love the simplicity of it i'm torn between them honestly i do love the the aston uh livery just the color and uh i mean I, obviously the color is is the color but the overall look i don't know when when that car hit the grid i just it felt special just the mm. look of it um which might not be a popular opinion or i may just be called pedestrian because that's essentially liking just a basic aston martin uh <laughs> on the street but yeah if i if I choose between the two, I honestly, I'd probably go Alpine. I don't know. Well, the the last guest on this podcast before you was Sean Ball, the man who designed that very livery. So. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I watched a piece of that. Um, yeah, there you go. I, Beautiful. I I would love to trick that guy into designing my cart helmet. Maybe I can create like a like a Carlos burner and be like, "Yeah, man, this is my private account. This is my Finsta." Mate. 
Um, Absolutely. You've got to go in on that helmet design, man. <laughs> and then what about of all time? What's the kind of, is there like, a, is it a one from back in the day? Is there any particular car that you just think looks bloody lovely? Uh, I like, I want to be like such a fucking LA, like, you know, um, uh, what is the black and gold classic fucking John player? Yeah. Yeah. Lotus. Yeah. Yeah. Lotus. Yeah. I want to be such a lame ass and say that, but I feel like that's just the coldest one I've seen ever. Like black and gold just looks so tough to me and to like race with that. I don't know. That car just, it, it just looks classic. I don't mm. know. No, maybe that's a maybe that's a weak vote. I don't know. No, mate, not at all. One of the most iconic liveries for sure yeah, in the history yeah. of the sport. I I promise you that. Well, mate, listen, I, I think we've we've chatted for a good while now. Um, yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming on, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. No, man, I appreciate it. You know, uh, hopefully everyone listening enjoyed that. You know, I may not have the best F one opinions, um, but give me like five years, dude, and then they're gonna get really good. Some mad wheel knowledge. Yeah. On the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> I just need time to catch up, man. Okay. I'm just, I'm new to a lot of this. But yeah, um, I'll put, of course, links to all of Noel's stuff in yeah, the description man. below. Of course. Not necessary. Um, dude, yeah. Thanks for this. This, this is great. Come on. That is good, yeah. good. Good to chat. And um, that's it. We're done. I don't really have an outro for these. I just kind cool. of. <laughs> I just, I just stop talking. So that's fine. Like, if people get this far, then they're already invested, yeah. surely.